Hi there, my name is Matthew Ball, I'm the Group Art Director of Think Scotland in Glasgow. And I've asked, been asked by Nikki to um, talk about my favourite magazine. Now I'm going to go back a few years to um, uh, 1983 and talk about how magazines inspired me. I was a new reader um, to this particular magazine and I thought it would be good to talk about magazines from a perspective of somebody who wasn't in the industry and um, perhaps talk about how magazines opened up my world and uh, gave me an identity really and inspired me um, to carry out my hobby. So I was about 15 and I got into cycling and uh, my dad subscribed me to this um, general cycling magazine called um, Bicycle Magazine and it covered uh, all, the, all the broad um, spectrum of cycling from um, racing, touring, bike reviews, bike maintenance and um, bench tests for different products. Basically a general, a general consumer magazine for a special interest market. The editor was um, Richard Ballantyne, who was a cycling advocate, um, journalist, and had written um, a Richard's Bicycle book, which had had a lot of a big impact in the cycling world. The, the art director was um, Peter Davenport, who I don't know much about. He, um, he, I've done a bit of research, and he wrote um, the Dictionary of Visual Language with um, uh, Richard Thompson. Um, and I think he came more from a um, uh, design agency background, but I'm not entirely sure. So this is the cover. Um, this Futura massive, fat, heavy italic is the, uh, is the font of choice, from, from the mastered all the way down to the tasters. Um, I don't think they'd invented benefit-driven cover lines in, the, in 1983. You've got light survey, which it links to the main, the main cover image. Um, Tour de France retrospective, cycling in the rain, um, maintenance, headsets. Well, these were all things which, um, which really uh, grabbed my attention and I really wanted to find out more about. Now the, the cover image is, uh, is something I've always pondered whether it was uh, real or not. Was this a real artefact? Had they spent thousands of pounds getting a, a light bulb made with a, with a cycle filament inside it? I don't know. But, um, I, uh, I asked Twitter to find out how it was made. And then Wayne Ford got back to me and he talked about um, it being a line drawing, PMT cameras, camera negatives, um, uh, backlights, uh, multiple exposures, all these sort of things. I don't know anything about really because I'm, I'm used to using Photoshop or, or, uh, or downloading something from Shutterstock. I doubt if Shutterstock's got something this cool. Um, and a, a current magazine today would have um, an experiential image of a site that's going really fast in a great environment. And there'd be lots of blues and, and greens and, and bright colours. But uh, this concept image is, is just sort of quite interesting, really, for, for a bicycle magazine at the period. Now, this light survey um, is something I was really interested in as a, as a 15-year-old because I didn't have any lights and I wanted to buy some. So I, uh, I flicked through this and I bought the, the best on test of wonder lights, which were pretty rubbish. Um, lights in those days, didn't, the batteries didn't last long and they... Didn't show they fell off the bikes and things like that, but it's quite a really comprehensive test. You've got um, the shapes of the beams, you've got graphs to show um, the battery life and things like that. So, this is really what magazines today do, but I've never seen anything so in depth as that. Um, talking about racing, um, talking about racing, I'd never heard of the Tour de France in, uh, in 1983. So, so, the Tour de France takes part in July, so you've got August, September, October, or three months afterwards, you've got the report of, uh, of that year's Tour de France here. And it was fantastic. It opened up my eyes. I've never heard anything like this before. This massive bike race that goes on in France. Um, and you've got uh, Robert Miller on there, who became my hero. A great, really great report from um, Jeff Nicholson, who's a big name uh, journalist, cycling journalist. And then this, the middle pages, they, uh, that... Um, that's, that's ripped out because I, I took this map of the Tour de France and I stuck it on my, on my bedroom wall as a teenager because I thought it was so cool. You know, this magazine gave me, gave me an identity for who I was. I could call myself a, a cyclist when I read this magazine. I don't know who the illustrator was who, who did that. It's not credited. And, of course, the magazine has got everything else that um, uh, a magazine, a consumer magazine, it's got um, travel, travel pieces, it's got... You know, step by steps um, on on bike maintenance headsets, which I took my bike apart so I could I could clean it up following these tips. Uh, you've got these really weird things like you've got chair like bikes, which I'd never seen before. So 
there is a fantastic picture of these recumbents, and you've got um, a story about a 24 hour time trial. What? I'd never heard of stuff like this. Um, so, this magazine was just uh, so inspirational to me, and it really kicked off my love of cycling um, and a lifelong hobby, really. So, um, thank you very much, Bicycle Magazine.